AMD's Ryzen processors have definitely started to stir up the CPU market. There's no doubting that. The R7 lineup, which includes the 1800X for $499, the 1700X for $399, and the 1700 for $329. At this price range, the Ryzen 7 chips rival Intel's i7 chips, but let's be honest, most gamers out there aren't going to spend $300 or more on a CPU. And that's where the highly anticipated Ryzen 5 lineup comes in offering a much more consumer-friendly stack. The pricing of the 1600X, the 1600, the 1500X, and the 1400 do well to match the pricing of Intel's i5 processors, being the i5 7400, 7500, 7600, and 7600K. However, where all of Intel's chips are locked, except for their K processors, meaning that you can't overclock their clock frequency unless the product name includes a K, all of AMD's Ryzen processors can be overclocked. At least, that's what we've seen with their R5 and R7 chips. This becomes even more interesting when you consider that some of AMD's processors in the Ryzen lineup are identical in number of cores and threads, and only vary in clock speed. So, what does this mean? Well, with the Ryzen 7 lineup, we saw that the 1700X and the 1800X were pretty much made redundant due to the fact that you could overclock the 1700 just as high as the 1800X, resulting in identical performance. So. What about the Ryzen 5 lineup? Could you, for example, take the Ryzen R5 1400, the cheapest processor in the stack, and overclock it close to the R5 1500X and save yourself some cash in the process? Well, we're going to be taking a look at just how far we can push the R5 1400, and I think a lot of you will be surprised. The test system here features an MSI B350 PC Mate motherboard, the AMD R5 1400 processor which will be taken to its limits, the AMD Wraith Stealth cooler which comes stock with the R5 CPU, 16GB of 2666MHz DDR4 RAM, a GTX 1070 and a Corsair SF450 power supply. I updated the BIOS to the latest version on the MSI website and overclocking was achieved through the Ryzen Master software. After some tweaking and trial and error, I managed to get the R5 1400 all the way up to 4.05 GHz at 1.33 volts. Not only did we reach the clock speed of the R5 1500, we surpassed it by 350 MHz, and even surpassed the fastest chip on the R5 stack, the 1600X, which would result in faster single-threaded performance. I did try to squeeze the processor up to 4.1 GHz, but only managed one successful pass in Cinebench R15, before it crashed over and over again. So let's take a real quick look at how it performs in Cinebench R15, a synthetic rendering test which utilizes all eight threads of the R5 1400. At stock, the 1400 scored 695, and once overclocked, we see that boost all the way up to 852. To put that into perspective, that score surpasses a fourth generation Intel i7 chip, the popular 4770K. Now, whether that also translates into superior gaming performance, I can't really say for sure just yet. But what I can tell you is that I'm currently in the process of comparing this chip, the R5 1400, against the Intel i5 7500. And after these overclocking results, I can't wait to see how it does, seeing as Intel have dominated this arena for the last few years. Load temperatures at over 4 GHz weren't too bad either, and after multiple consecutive runs of Cinebench R15, the R5 1400 peaked at 81 degrees Celsius. However, this was with the stock Wraith Stealth Cooler, which I'll add is the cheapest, smallest cooler in their Wraith lineup. So the old days of the AMD processors doubling as space heaters may just be a thing of the past. So what does this mean for the remaining R5 chips? Well, the R5 1600 and 1600X are six core 12 thread processors. So they're not totally comparable to the 1400 and 1500X. However, seeing as we surpassed the clock frequency of the 1500X, does that basically render its existence pointless? Well, not really, and here's why. They are only $20 apart, and with that extra $20, you're getting a higher clock frequency out of the box and a slightly better stock cooler, the Wraith Spire. When compared to the Wraith Stealth, has a taller fin stack and RGB LEDs. The taller fins should result in better cooling performance and slightly quieter temperatures, but I can't say that for sure. And whether you can extend the 1500X's clock speed beyond what we've done here with the 1400, I can't make any claims on that either. However, based on what I've seen with other reviewers, I haven't really seen any Ryzen processor go beyond 4 to 4.1GHz on air cooling, so I doubt that we can push a 1500X beyond that. Let me know what you guys think on this overclock. How do you think it will pair up in gaming performance? If you'd like to see the Ryzen 1400 go up against Intel's i5-7500, make sure to hit that subscribe button, as that will be up in a few days. 
Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'm Ali from Optimum Tech and I'll see you guys in the next one.